Thank you, and thank you very much for inviting me here. Dear all, I'm very pleased being invited to this conference, a very important and timely one. I myself have been following the, the development in Hungary over the last two and a half years as one of the two rapporteurs for the Council of Europe's monitoring committee. We were asked to follow and report back our findings, and so we did. You and I know that uh, many here in Hungary asked why on earth should you do that? Hungary is an old democracy. Uh, it's a fantastic country, a member in Council of Europe since 1990, in EU since 1994. By that, all should be proven okay, some people think and say. But uh, is that really the case? Could we lean back and rely on that in our own countries? That we have became members of Council of Europe and in the European Union? Council of Europe have, uh, has been scrutinizing several EU members uh, and monitoring today 14 out of 47 members of Council of Europe. So the alarm was on for Hungary, as it had been before for Greece, Latvia, Austria, Liechtenstein, UK and Italy. All member states, all members, have a responsibility to both being watchdogs as well as helping each other improve the values we all signed up for when becoming members. Democracy is not an easy thing, not a quick fix, we all know that. Not uh, something given from heaven or from, by history. It is the everyday struggle for each generation to develop our societies in a democratic way. The UN Charter on Universal Human Rights declared the rights for everyone to take part in their country's government, directly or through freely chosen representatives. UN, the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, the Council of Europe, are results of lessons learned. So even the EU. The insight were there. At that time, the need of safeguarding human rights to build democratic institutions with checks and balances within our societies. We had seen what could be happening otherwise. And we have seen it since, and we do see it today. Of course, every country is unique, but in Europe we try to set up some common standards to follow and also to build uh, some institutions to safeguard us all if we are at risk. We formed a safeguard for human rights for everyone individually by agreeing on European Convention on Human Rights and by creating the Court on Human Rights as well as other conventions and protocols by creating other independent bodies as the Venice Commission, the Human Rights Commissioner, and different monitoring bodies, we tried to make sure that we didn't get lost again. By that, not saying that uh, there is only one way of doing things, but acknowledge that there are some areas where we have to be very cautious. There are lessons learned. We can sometimes hear the early morning alarm, but uh, will we? Can we? And if so, how should we react? We can hear the bell in several countries in Europe. Shall we take notice? <coughs> or put a blind eye? Hoping it will fade away. Do as the three monkeys Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. 
One of the constant areas for disagreements in many emerging democracies is the basic rules, often laid down in a written constitution. Agreeing on the rules for the society is, of course, a very crucial starting point for democratic development. If we look around, uh, we will find quite some countries with problems due to not being able to build at least a common ground for the society. It's not easy, by no means. It takes time and responsibility, a will <coughs> from all parts, both to respect and listen to the others, to reach those common rules. And as always, the strongest part have the biggest responsibility. <coughs> Demo democracy is, of course, about electing representatives, <coughs> free and fair. But to be able to do that, you need a lot more than a free, a a free and fair election day. Free and fair elections are fully dependent on freedoms and rights of the people in everyday life, of impartial institutions, of division of uh, power between legislative and judicial branches, of checks and balances, in our societies. Crucial indicator on the state of freedom is freedom of expression, free press and media. How can you achieve free and fair elections in the society if the people are not really free, if media are, free, uh, are not free and expression are not free? Trust and not oppression, threat or fear is the basic ground for enhancing a democratic society. Be careful. If the bells are ringing and you see the signs, you may be going down the road on a slippery slope towards an autocratic society. I, as a parliamentarian in our common European House, the Council of Europe, and part uh, in the system of checks and balances that we have achieved. We, together with the uh, civil society and free media, must be the watchdogs. Not to bark with our governments, but to guide and <coughs> challenge them to go for higher standards and democracy, or democracy, rule of law and human rights. Those values we all voluntarily signed up for when becoming members. We should strive for going uphill, not downhill. Usually, many start to, to compare the situation in different countries. Are they all treated in the same way? I heard it before here. But remember, every country is unique and must be treated as such on its own merits. And that's how I tried to work in my fact-finding work on the development in Hungary. And I can assure you that when I and my colleague asked for opening of a monitoring procedure in respect of Hungary, it was due to our will to go uphill. Me and my co-rapporteur invested in considerable time and efforts to prepare our opinion on Hungary. A lot of paper, three fact-finding visits, more than 80 dialogues, and of course, we look closely into the 11 opinions, record high, all-time high, I think, uh, 11 opinions prepared by our European independent legal and constitutional expert body, the Venice Commission. The latest opinion on the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution clearly vindicates the, the, the findings of ours and the monitoring committee. If we follow the tracks from the past, we can see that free media, freedom of expression, is a key to develop democracies. Oppression of journalists, censorship, self-censorship, threats, detentions, are signs to look for. Because we know, in countries where the free word is uh, jailed or even murdered, the track is leading us away from democracy. The Media Act 
in Hungary were uh, heavily criticized by the USC representative of freedom and media from Euro European Commissioner uh, Bruce, the Council of Europe's uh, Human Rights Commissioner, who expressed that uh, he saw threats to the independence of the public broadcasters, infringements of the rights of the journalists to protect sources, as well as attempts of a prior content regulation. The Council of Europe has provided extensive expertise to the authorities of the media legislation. Regrettably, most of the fundamental concerns raised in these expert opinions were either not addressed or amendments were limited to technicalities. Independent and impartial media regulatory authorities are essential for the protection of the freedom of expression and the exercise of free speech as uh, guaranteed in Article 10 of the European Convention on Human Rights. Let me briefly sum up uh, our findings in our report on Hungary. Democracy. Since uh, 2010, the current government has used its two-thirds majority to amend the old constitution 12 times and to push through, in less than a year, a completely new constitution, which has already been amended on four occasions, followed by us. Now we learned about the fifth <coughs> amendment, which will be enforced from the 1st of October. The constant changing of, a con of the constitution, constitution has <coughs> turned into an instrument of political power instead of a framework for the organization of state and government. It has been done in a political climate of mistrust and fight. This undermines its democratic legitimacy and may be a source of future problems. Again, in record time, the ruling coalition has passed over 30 so-called cardinal laws that requires a two-thirds majority to be adopted or amended. Let me quote the Venice Commission the wide use of cardinal laws to cement the economic, social, fiscal, family, educational, etc. policies of the current two-thirds majority is a serious threat to democracy." End of quote. The Venice Commission even stated that, quote, elections would become meaningless if the legislature would not be able to change important aspects of legislation that should have been enacted with a simple majority and approach. Rule of law. There seems to be a wish to exert control over Hungarian society far beyond the mandate it has received from the voters in this majority. The sheer number of institutions and regulatory bodies that we were either newly established or thoroughly reformed by the ruling coalition underscores this intention. Let me just mention a few. The Ombudsman Institution, the Media Council and Media Authority, the National Election Committee, the Authority for Data Protection, and the Budget Council. Since uh, 2010, the administration of the judiciary has been completely overhauled and brought under control by the ruling majority. Over 300 judges were forced into retirement because of the sudden lowering of the retirement age from 70 to 62. The Supreme Court was replaced by the Curia, and the mandate of its president was abruptly uh, terminated before the end of his, his term. The newly created National Judicial Office gives its president, who is elected for nine years, an excessive number of competencies. The office has been confirmed in the fundamental law without any indication of the necessary limitations and the checks and balances. The Fourth Amendment provided the, official, the, the office with the additional legitimacy without providing for additional accountability. The supreme body of judicial self-government was not even mentioned in the fundamental law. With the Fifth Amendment, there seem to be some changes done in an attempt to make, uh, take care of some of uh, these concerns, which I do welcome, but of course uh, have not been able to study uh, in detail, so I will not go into that. Nowhere has the erosion of the system of checks and balances been more clear than in the systematic curtailing 
of the powers of and competences of the Constitutional Court. The Constitutional Court no longer has jurisdiction over financial and economic matters regulated by cardinal laws. All its decisions from before 1st of January 2012 have been declared null and void, and its competence with regard to constitutional amendments is now uh, expressly limited to procedural issues. Let me quote the Venice Commission again. The limitation of the role of the Constitutional Court leads, us, leads to a risk that it may negatively affect all three pillars of the Council of Europe. Separation of powers as an essential tenet of democracy, the protection of human rights, and the rule of law. End quote. As noted by the Venice Commission, there is a consistent pattern of reacting with constitutional amendments <coughs> to the rulings of the Constitutional Court. Provisions which uh, were found unconstitutional and annulled by the Constitutional Court were reintroduced on the constitutional level to prevent the Court from reviewing them again in the future. The complete removal of the competence of the Constitutional Court to control provisions that should have remained at the level of ordinary legislation is an infringement of democratic checks and balances and the separation of powers according to the Venice Commission. On top of that, we took notice, of course, of the way the Court has been renewed and composed. Human rights. In our opinion, the new constitutional legal framework in Hungary is in several aspects at variance or contradicts European standards, and in particular the European Convention on Human Rights. Particularly we found that this was the case with regard to cardinal legislation on the judiciary, the elections and the recognition of churches. The European Court has already found a violation of the Convention in, number of, in a number of cases such as the 98% taxes on the severance pay for civil servants on their dismissal without any reasons given. 150 judges have applied to contest their early retirement and around 13,000 law enforcement or security personnel are complaining about the replacement of their early retirement pension by taxable dollars. <coughs> It seems as if some notion has been taken into account in the Fifth Amendment on the ruling of recognition of churches. But even here, I would like to stress the fact that I have not been able to look closely to the Fifth Amendment. Dear all, nobody contests that there were free and fair elections in 2010, and the ruling coalition got a clear mandate for reform from the voters. But a two-thirds majority gives no government a free right. What we have witnessed in the last years is a consistent pattern of using the Constitution and the cardinal laws as political instruments to cement choices made by the present majority well beyond the mandate given by the voters, while considerably weakening this, at the same time the constitutional system of checks and balances. This raises serious concerns. <coughs> the concerns raised are not some paragraphs or just technical remarks. If, uh, as we did, you take them all together, you will see a more holistic pattern. Taken separately, they would uh, certainly raise concerns, but the accumulation of reforms that aim at establishing political control of most key institutions while in parallel weakening the systems of checks and balances are indicators for something more serious. I heard in the debate in the Assembly of Council of Europe that Hungary had changed a one-party constitution by a one-party decision. My question is if that is a good or a warning signal. What lessons have we learned from our history? Should we not strive to avoid the tyranny of the majority? Because, um, as Lord Acton put it in the 19th century, 
power tends to corrupt. And absolute power corrupts, absolutely. Decisions made by a majority may place its interests so far above those of an individual or minority group that it constitutes active oppression of their rights. If you follow that road, it may lead to oppression of a disliked ethnic, religious, or racial group, deliberately penalized by the majority element acting through the democratic process. Constitutional limits on the powers of a legislative body and the introduction of a Bill of Rights have in Europe been used to counter that perceived problem. A separation of powers has also been implemented to limit the force of the majority in a single leg legislative uh, chamber. The whole idea with the limits is to safeguard that the basic rules will remain common grounds. A two-thirds majority, in my view, is no excuse to use the constitution or the cardinal laws as a political instrument or perpetrate, to perpetrate choices made by the present majority while endangering the constitutional checks, uh, system of checks and balances. Remember, the justification for a higher threshold when adopting constitutional framework is two. Firstly, to protect it from frivolous changes by a ruling party for narrow partisan self-interest. Secondly, to ensure as an as wide as possible consensus between, a political, between all political forces over the legal and democratic foundations of the state. Well, taken, all, uh, taken together, we have been hopeful sometimes, but also seen several setbacks. The Council of Europe, Parliamentary Assembly, the majority in that assembly didn't follow our recommendation to open monitoring, but decided to closely follow the development, and so it will be done. In the European Parliament, there was a clear wish to be able to do more for safeguarding the develop that the development followed the values we signed up for, voluntary, not forced, voluntary. We need uh, to build more robust democracies for the freedoms and rights of our people. Let's go forward, not backwards. Thank you for listening. My question is about the political climate in, in the assembly because we know that uh, there was a division, dividing line between the political groups in the assembly. So uh, in Hungary the government often argues that it's simply a left-right divide what we are facing and, and all the left and liberal forces in the European Parliament as well as in your assembly support the left liberal forces in Hungary and uh, the conservatives are certainly supporting the government. So how can we make a clear picture regarding this problem? And then we go on with some other questions. So please don't talk too much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Um, it's not an easy um, line, I think. If you look into and, and uh, scrutinize the Parliamentary Assembly of Council of Europe, you will find that there is divisions uh, along uh, party lines, but you can also find that there are divisions uh, depending on, on um, your different experiences, uh, where you come from, your country. Uh, I mean, I, I saw in this vote there was uh, a voting in favor of opening monitoring was also a vote within the EPP group, so they were also split. Some of them uh, didn't turn up. Those who told me they would have voted in favor, but they just didn't turn up to make sure that they wasn't penalized afterwards. And we had in the liberal group uh, people voting in favor of, of uh, not opening, 
Uh, so you can't say that this is just a, a clear line, a clear cut. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, it is uh, a view of, of uh, how the poli uh, you, I think you can see how the political parties within, on the European level, are dealing with issues. I think we have a lot to, to learn from that, and we have a lot to work with in our uh, political European parties to make sure that we are not, in a way, um, giving shelter for, for uh, things that we don't, uh, really don't like and all of us are not agreeing on. Uh, but there are a risk that that could be the case. Uh, and I think uh, we have a lesson to learn there as well in the European political parties. Okay, thank you. So let's gather, let's gather three questions, okay? Sophia will be first. Please yes. make it short yes, and then... Um, very brief. Um, if I was to summarize your speech, you would, the way I took it is that you argue that there is procedural democracy in Hungary but not substantive democracy, right? Uh, as a result of various government policies. My question is, what are um, the recommendations? Did you come up with some recommendations? How are we going to deal with this problem? Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one, please, over there. Just very shortly, please. Yeah, thank you. I'm Shandor from a historian from Hungary, and uh, I've been to Sweden, and uh, as far as I know, uh, the Swedish society uh, under, uh, uh, have undergone uh, much uh, uh, changes uh, regarding the communication uh, in the last century. And in my opinion, uh, what you uh, spoke about rooted in the tradition and mentality of uh, of the uh, particular uh, uh, country and, and people. So, if you monitoring uh, uh, Hungarian uh, society, uh, what your forecast of <laughs> you can't make forecast. Uh, what your opinion for for chances that we uh, can uh, uh, make uh, similar uh, changes in everyday communication what was in Sweden uh, in the middle of the last century. Thank you. Thank you. And the last one, William Horsley over there. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, William Horsley. Um, in July, the Committee of Ministers uh, uh, agreed with the Parliamentary Assembly recommendation to set up a, a system of online, not monitoring, but information gathering and exposure about media freedom violations in Europe. Uh, th th this may just be a window dressing. It may not be meaningful because there's no budget and it is extremely complicated. But surely uh, this kind of um, exposure, the naming and shaming of countries publicly with the backing of the Council of Europe on a, an online site uh, would be very significant for countries like Hungary which have such deep problems with press freedom. Uh, do you see it as realistic? Well, uh, try to answer them, the three questions. Uh, well, uh, of course, we, can, we have seen that there are Risk. I think I combine them because because uh, uh, there are risks, of course, and we have seen what has been happening for uh, the last years. <coughs> but uh, there is also a lot of possibilities and opportunities. It all depends on on uh, the ability and the will uh, on the st uh, amongst the stakeholders, amongst the people. Um, where do Hungary, Hungarians want to go? Where do they want to go? And where do they want to bring the country? Uh, but, but for us, as uh, friends uh, in Europe, uh, it's important to just look for, for signs and hear the bells and be able to speak out. Because it's uh, good when, when friends telling us Sorry, you, you have to. Your button isn't uh, closed. Then you do it, and it's helpful. Well, you you have toothpaste on your cheek. <laughs> well, it's good to, to that someone tells us. Uh, and in the same mod, I mean, being helpful is seeing outside from out, the outside things that perhaps in, from the inside it's hard to see from different reasons, be it media be it uh, habits, be it, uh, well, 
you don't want to make uh, problems for anyone. <laughs> Uh, and that is, the fear factor is always there uh, in the societies. And then it's good to have friends uh, to be watchdogs with you and help you and reach out. And I think uh, it is uh, one of the key roles also for, for uh, Council of Europe, be it naming and blaming. Uh, and I hope the media issue will be uh, followed up because Council of Europe is the main, has the main um, grounds or, or the broadest uh, uh, perspectives of dealing with that and it is very important and of course uh, the way the cultural committee in the Council of Europe will be following the media uh, development here in Hungary as they have been asked to do is important also to see where is uh, where are they going uh, not easy to forecast but but uh, I think there are a need for, for being outspoken and it's a need uh, to be brave uh, these days because there are a lot of people, a lot of, of fear out there and many don't bother uh, and that is uh, lo uh, lack of engagement uh, is one of the, the worst part of it. So engage. Uh, look for future and there are some uh, of course in our report some uh, recommendations but that is only for the legal structure uh, and the, to change the structure uh, and, and uh, of course I don't think that will be happening before the election now I hope you I, I try to answer the questions <laughs>